in this section, we're going to start counting. Now, I told you in the last section that counting is kind of a big deal. Um, it's kind of, <laughs> you may think you know how to count, but you don't. Uh, anyway, we're gonna, you're going to start to realize what I mean by that. Um, and you, maybe you do know how to count. I'm just being a little silly. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out. This section, we're going to cover the concepts of the addition principle and the multiplication principle principle. Now, the this is how it just exactly how it sounds. We are either going to add things or we are going to multiply things. That's it. Those are your options, okay? So, don't make things too hard. Don't try to get too creative. Um, now, I will say we are going to learn another concept where we are going to have to actually subtract things too, but that's coming. Don't worry about it for now, but it's the same idea as adding. Just instead of putting things together, you're going to take them away, but whatever. Okay, so for now, adding and subtracting. What I want you to do, um, we're gonna we're gonna look for rules. We're gonna try to explore and try to figure out what our rules are and how we're going to apply them. So I think it's easier to kind of do some problems and have these things naturally come out than for me to just tell you when you see do this, this, do this. When you see that, do that. One of the most common mistakes students make though is they try to make up rules that are always, whenever I see or I do this, whenever I see and I do this, and you have to be careful because the English language stinks for the word or and and. They can take on multiple meanings um, and sometimes you're going to add when you see the word and and sometimes you're going to you're going to multiply when you see the and, word and. So it's more about conceptual. If you are thinking about the big idea, that never changes. But if you're trying to look for just a trigger word, not going to work. Okay? So, big ideas. So the first problem here. You have four pairs of pants, three shirts, and two belts. How many different outfits can you create? Okay, so four pairs of pants, three shirts. Whoops, went a little too far on that one. Three shirts and two belts. So the idea here is this is going to be somebody who's very fashionably challenged and they don't care about matching. Okay, so maybe or maybe they plan their wardrobe so all of these things match. Okay, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to get dressed and we're going to say how many different outfits can we make? Now, let's one one method we can do to figure this out is called a decision tree. And what that means is you start off by saying what is the first decision I need to make? Okay, what is my first decision? Well, I'm going to pick a pair of pants because we already said this person really doesn't care what pants get paired up with what shirt with. So they're, they they're literally they just reach into their closet and say, let me pull a pair of pants. Okay, now how many? So when we're making our first decision, the question is, is how many choices do we have? And we had four pairs of pants. So therefore, if I'm standing here at my first decision, I have a pair of pants one, I have a pair of pants two pair of pants three, and last but not least, pair of pants four. So I have how many choices? Four choices. Okay, now that was decision one. Now comes decision two, right? Decision two, and I, I'm going to start abbreviating this. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to call it D sub two for decision two. So therefore, this would be D sub one for decision one. Okay, so for decision two, now I have three shirts to choose from. And it didn't matter what pair of pants I wore. So if I have pair of pants one on, I have now three choices. I can wear shirt one, shirt two, or shirt three. And once again, shirt one, shirt two, shirt three. I'm running out of space very quickly. And so on and so forth for shirt one, shirt two, shirt three. Can I get this any bigger? Give myself some more space. Not really. Shirt one, <laughs> shirt two, and shirt three. So I had three choices. So if we stopped and paused right now, we said just using pants and shirts, how many different options do I have? Well, what we would do is we count up each of these kind of little end. I, when we talk about them as a tree, I always think of the, the last one as the leaves because they're at the end. And I call these all the branches. So in a video, if I refer to a branch or a leaf, that's what I mean is uh, a branch is in the middle, a leaf is at the end. So how many leaves do we have? Well, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, 
you might be saying, well, duh, because this is quite literally the definition, that should be all one thing here, of multiplication. I have a group of three, a group of three, a group of three, a group of three, and how many of those do I have? Four of them. So we could have more efficiently gotten here, instead of having to count up all my leaves, I could just said I have four groups of three, that's the definition of multiplication, so that means I have a total of 12 outfits so far. All right, so I think hopefully though that may have been the moment where some of you just kind of realized, aha, aha, right? This is multiplication principle. Yes, yes it is, because we are just going to now repeat once again with our third decision. Our third decision is picking our belts. So now for decision three, all right, we're going to build that. Let me move this out of the way. We're going to build that off of here. So for decision three, Shirt one, I have two choices on my belts, like wear belt one or belt two. <gasps> or if I had shirt two, pair, pants one, shirt two, I can wear belt one or belt two. Pants one, shirt three, I could also have belt one or belt two. I don't want to write all these out. Da, 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 da. So the question is, is how many of these groups am I going to have? Well, these are all little groups of two. I have two choices, right? Two different belts. And I'm going to have this same decision for each each shirt. And we said we had 12 of those, so it would just be 12 times 2. So, or I could look at it down here and say I had two choices, right? So, I would be able to figure this out by just saying take each of these values and multiply, and so 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. So I have a total of 24 different outfits. Okay, now that's not how you spell outfits. Let's try that again. Doo -doo, there we go. Now, do you have to draw a decision tree for every problem? Absolutely not. It's just there to help you visualize what's going on. So if you have a big situation, it helps you kind of understand, well, do I have this situation where I'm choosing either pant one, pant two, pant three, pant four, and then once I make that decision moving along, it helps you organize and it helps you recognize multiplication principle. It's kind of the idea. Multiplication principle kind of chalks itself up to when you have decisions. It's the multiplication of the number of choices. So for if you the way I'll end up doing it in the future is I'll say, all right, decision one, I have four choices. Decision two, I have three choices. And decision three, I have two choices. And instead of writing decision, because that's a little generic, I might label what they are. First pick a shirt, then pick, oh, sorry, pants. First pick pants, then pick shirt, then pick belt. Decisions and how many choices do I have for each of those? Yes, it is just a coincidence that it's 4 times 3 times 2, or 4, 3, 2, counting down. Okay, so let's build off of that idea. Now, problem two. You're out to dinner, and you find that there are eight chicken dishes, five beef, beef dishes, two fish, three vegetarian. How many different dinner choices do you have? All right, so... You need to ask yourself, is this a decision tree? Am I making repeated decisions for each of these? And it's relatively simple to figure out. You say, okay, am I doing this? Okay, I am first going to pick chicken one or chicken two or chicken three or chicken four. I'm going to pick one of my chicken dishes. And then once I pick one of those, now I'm going to pick beef. Am I going to eat that many dinners? Um, probably not. I'm not going to then pick a beef dish, then pick a fish dish, then pick a vegetarian dish. I think no matter how hungry you are, unless these are those like little bite-sized dinners, no matter how hungry you are, this ain't happening. So what you're supposed to realize here is that these are all main courses. And when we're talking about your selections for dinner, what we're really just saying is this is one decision what main course are you going to have, right? We have w one decision, just as what is our main course? And how do we figure that out? Well, I have eight chickens to choose from, five beef, two fish, or three vegetarian. And all of those will go together to make my main, my number of choices. So what, eight plus five is 13, 15, 18. I have 18 different main courses to choose from. Okay, and there's the example of your addition principle. So what is addition principle? When do you use it? Well, it's when you are, um, it's all of your choices used, or uh, choices not used, but choices available 
in one decision. Okay, so when you're making that one selection, those are my choices. All right, so now, that is it. That's it. That's the whole section. Okay, and welcome to this half of the class. It usually boils down to two or three very, very small ideas, but then it's going to explode in complexity. But it really just comes down to, this section comes down to decisions and choices. If it's decisions, you take those values and you multiply them. Then options for decision one to options for decision two. If it's all of these options within one decision, aka I have beef, fish, vegetarian, chicken, those just add together and I have a total of 18 different things, 18 different options. So now I want you to read this problem. I want you to try it on your own. Uh, if you need to make a decision tree, you absolutely can. Uh, if you don't want to make a decision tree, you don't absolutely don't have to. I probably will not make a decision tree when I do this problem. Okay, pause the video, give it a shot. Okay, here we go. We are out to dinner and we find that there are 10 main courses, all right, three chicken appetizers and five beef, ooh, appetizers, I'm gonna make that blue. So do you notice we have appetizers and appetizers, all right? Seven ice cream desserts and four cakes. I'm gonna assume those are desserts as well. How many different dinner choices do you have if you will order one appetizer main course and dessert? All right, so to me, what I'm hearing here in the question is, is I'm going to order one appetizer, one main course, one dessert. So I have three decisions to make. I first need to pick an appetizer. My second decision is pick a main course. My third is pick a dessert. And kind of like the outfit, we're going to assume that if I order a chicken appetizer, that doesn't have any effect on my um, what dessert I might pick. Okay, so my first decision, let's pick a appetizer. How many choices do I have for my appetizer? Well, I have three chicken and five beef. Okay, there's my first decision. Next, I'm going to pick a main course, which I, there were 10. There were just 10 of those. All right. And then for my dessert, uh, there were seven ice creams and four cakes. So therefore, the total number of options for dinner I have is eight times 10 times 11 and that's too big for me to do in my head so actually it's probably not rephrase it's 8 times 11 is 88 88 times 10 so that'd be 880 so there are 880 different options or different combinations for dinner all right, so that should be enough to get you started. So now the rest of this, the rest of this, I mean, in the next several videos are just going to be practice problems and they're going to get even more complex than this one. This was, this was just the intro. All right, see you in the next video.